a major infrastructure project going on here. Mega bridge builders here. <laughs> the 19-year-old uh, seems to be interested in doing this kind of thing, so it'd be nice to have when we do the maple syrup. We got to get across this little creek here. That's the plan. And yep, I'm gonna burn this brush. Okay, so we just had a uh, what do you call that? A meeting. <laughs> And uh, we brainstormed. That's what I'm trying to think of. It's like a bird died here. So the bridge used to be there. You can see the two spots. I think we're going to move it over to about here. Because the, the snowmobile has a hard time making that corner. It's too tight. And uh, even though we got every tree around here is dead. It should be all cut down. But this maple here. It's That's why the bridge was where it was. We're going to move it over as close as we can. The edge will be even with the maple and then yeah so and what the, so what we're gonna do is pull these little suckers out of here pull that log out of there yeah okay well, I got this sheet of we've had this for 25 probably more than 25 years yeah and it's um, like pegboard it's got these tea slots uh, milled into it with a uh, some sort of router and it's a uh, it's all that hard plastic like countertop kitchen countertop type of uh, that melamine i don't know what you call that and it's a little scratched up i thought it was a little better than that but uh that's going to go on the wall behind the workbench it's going to be it's the next step uh after pegboard you can kind of hook your stuff I don't have any of the stuff that hooks on there, but it's like a little Z-shaped metal plate, and then you, you can either have a pin or a two pins or even a little, all kinds of little attachments for that. So that's going up there. It's in better shape than I remember it being. It's been faced down on the floor in the uh, attic of our shop for all those years. This chunk here is missing. But uh, I'll either paint that black or re-glue this piece on. Something hit it, I guess. It's being trans Someone gave me all these sheets. I had about, I must have had 25 or 30 sheets like this. We did the uh, floor in the storage area. It's, it's like an attic, but we have stairs going up for our other our, uh, shop, our main shop. And uh, I, uh, we had this one extra left over. I thought I wished I'd have kept two or three or four of those sheets, but you can you can buy these. They're not. They're about 75 dollars a sheet. For the uh, plain, the plain melamine stuff, no, uh, no finish on there. Then you can just paint it any color you want. But I think it looks a little, sh it looks kind of nice. I think you can even get little plastic inserts to slip in here that are either the same color as this or white or black. I don't think I'll do that, but uh, yeah. And then I drag this picnic table out of the bush. A couple of because of this COVID-19 thing, my two sons can't go anywhere, so I'm finding little projects for them to do. And these are all 2x12s, I think. There's five 2x12s, six feet long. So we're going to replace those with 2x6. Two on the bench seat and two for six up here. And then paint it. And, uh, yeah, this, I think the forest was reclaiming it. This is turning to dust. So I bought some lumber for that. I told my son, you know, when you need a six foot board, what do you do? Do you go buy an eight foot and cut them two feet off and throw it in the garbage? No. So you go buy 12 foots and you cut them exactly in the center and then you got two six foots. So there's uh, five, there's actually more than five. There's a couple of these for the bridge that he's building. I told him I'd buy a couple for each end. And then I got a whole bunch of little short pieces for to fill in the center. That someone gave me so these uh they come this uh, pressure treated they come with this kind of a brown stain looks nice and between the, the wood in the basement and this pile here where like 65 70 percent of our wood is done so just going around collecting what uh, is laying on the ground from what's blew down in wind storms and what's fallen down i think we'll have more wood than we need we always do we always have more than we need 
It's just a matter of getting it all in the basement before winter starts. So here's Bridge Building 101 here. The uh, got four seater post cross on. The yeah, I think two of them are too short. These over here, so I said go get longer ones. And uh, there's the pressure treated wood I bought. There's two boards there. There's another one at that end. So I think they're uh, they're all over here. And then I've got a whole bunch of this. I got a whole pallet full of these short pieces. It's all rocking. And a little forklift comes in handy. They loaded this in the back of my truck last year. Or I think it's two years ago. It's not last year. And I brought it home. It was stacked up about two feet higher. So we already built the bridge with this stuff. It's not pressure treated or anything, but it's free. So, And uh, so I just grabbed it with the forks, brought it over here. I said, that's probably all you need is there's a little bit more left. Uh, so cost is, the price is right. And uh, it's, it was indoors all this all these years until I got it. It's um, I guess someone came in, uh, some safety officer, TSSA, and uh, told them they need uh, new racking. So they bought all new racking, and then I got the old lumber. So that works perfect. So we, I said, listen, we'll put four across these cedar posts, which we have, and then I want to be able to drive our little side by side machine across here. So we get. But every once in a while we got to put a, a piece full of uh, right across to kind of tie it all together. So we went and grabbed a bunch. These are not pressure treated. So yeah, I figured it'll last maybe eight to ten years before it rots away. So yeah, the last one lasted almost. I think it's got to be around ten years. So we just pulled it out of there this spring. It was not much left of it. We were falling through, but. When I built it, we did not have the side. You know what? It's got to be 10 years ago because I've had that side-by-side -side machine for about eight, now, eight, nine years now. And uh, it was too narrow. It was built wide enough for the four-wheeler. And the snowmobile could cross it, but it was a little sketchy and when there's a big hump of snow in the middle. But um, this will be wide enough for the skidoo, the side-by-side -side machine. Yeah. And trying to make that corner, there's where the trail goes between those trees over there. It was a little difficult. That skidoo does not like to turn sometimes. So it'll work a little better. There's the trail right there. He's working at clearing it again. First time Cameron actually fixes something he drives. He used to think he used to believe that the only way the thing would work is just put it in D for drive. Start it, put it in D. Now he's starting to learn. More to it. From all that drifting you've been doing. How much pads left on that? And you got like, ah, it's about 20% on this one. I'm gonna make you a man. Okay, so here's the real progress report. We've got uh, this whole section of walls done right up to just to this window here at the back. So now I got to take all of my shelving off the wall back here to get that corner done. And uh, that blue sheet that I just showed you, I can't put it on until I have this uh, Aspenite, this OS, OSB, right up to the window. So that means this has got to be done. Anyway, it's slow, slow, slow because I'm up and down the ladder all day long. And, but I'm uh, pretty happy with what I got. One sheet of drywall up there. So once I get the OSB on, I'm going to put that top row of sheets of drywall. Take all this sketchy looking ladder down. And then I've got all the... I'm going to call. I haven't called the taper yet. Yeah, I had a bunch of estimates to do this week. And uh, I got some stumps to grind and... I still I do have a tree to cut down. I might try and get that done probably next week. 
And uh, so things are picking up and then I'm running out of time in the shop here. I did a brake job with my son on the car this morning. Um, They're finished. So he seems to like doing that kind of thing. He, I don't know if he likes it or not, but he's, I told him you got to learn how to do it because I can't afford to bring it to a shop and pay to have someone do it. So I'm teaching him how to do it and then no one taught me. So it's kind of working out kind of nicely. So I got to cut these four plugs in that blue sheet. And I cannot, you really can't make a mistake. So I'm going to do that tomorrow morning. I'm going to try and get this insulation tucked in there. Get some vapor barrier down with the window. Get that as aspenite. I call it aspenite OSB. It's 7 16 Norboard. You know. I think it's, it's, what I like about it is, uh, you can put a shelf up anywhere. And it's, it is only 7 16 but I'm going to try and hit the studs anyway. But uh, if you do have to put a light, anything, a hook or anything, you can put it anywhere on the wall. And then the drywall, it's not expensive for the drywall or this stuff. So I think this stuff's $11 a sheet and the drywall's $8.75 or something. So dirt cheap and it's clean. And it's what I like about the drywall is I do a lot of welding and I will be doing, I'll, I've got, Two welders, three welders in here, so it's fire resistant. I, you know, uh, I don't know the wood. Uh, my father-in-law used to always say, you know, you can't really weld in a shop with wooden walls, but uh, I don't, I don't know what the insurance company would say about that. So, got more stuff to move tomorrow, and then, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to have this wall done in the next. I think by the end of next week or so. But on the weekend, I'm working on trees and cleaning up the yard. Not really working on this, so I've only got about three, four days a week I got to do on it. So the front wall is all done, and I put two coats of mud on some spots over here. I think there's only one coat on this corner, so I'm gonna get a second coat and sand it. And I, I'm really leaving the scaffolding up until I get at least one or two coats of paint on primer. Really, I'm just gonna prime it. That's it. And then once that scaffolding comes down, I don't plan on going up there again for a long, long, long time. So there's the one. I'm using 4 by 8 sheets. I'm doing this all by myself, so I screw on a piece of 2 by 6 there to hold it up to get me started. See, the uh, I've offset the seams a little bit. So I start on the bottom, touching the concrete, and then with the drywall, I start tight to the top. So they're offset, and then... It's not really flat. That wall is not flat. It's uh, It's got a few curves in it here and there. So 14 feet long. So what do you expect? Uh, it's not 14. From the concrete up to the top, it's about 12 feet. 11 and a half, 12 feet. So from the floor to the ceiling there, it's 13, 7 inches. Okay. So well, there's my progress report. And my wife looked at this sketchy looking ladder stuff and she says is that safe and i said i don't know right now we can't even go out and meet with people it's considered dangerous so i think this is i don't know it looks safe to me i haven't fallen off yet so thanks for watching